Hi, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie, and I'm Debbie. Today we're reading for Monday through Thursday, January 23rd, 24th, 25th, and 26th. Now, when I'm doing Monday through Thursday, I use my Radley Valentine decks, my Archangel Power Tarot cards, my Guardian Angel Tarot cards. I will pull one from Inspirational Wisdom from uh, Francis Monroe and Judy Mestrangelo, and I use my Emily Anderson crystal deck. Now, this is the introduction. This is going to be on all the videos. So if you come in for your specific sign or if you cross watch and you see this, it's the same for the beginning, just for the beginning. But what I will do is I will put down there in the descriptions um, the timestamp for when you can just jump over the introduction and go straight to your video. All right. Now, the other thing I will be doing is in this introduction, I will be using my Weight Rider tarot cards and my Colette Baron Read the Good Tarot. Um, basically, what I do with this is I am just reading for what's going on in the world. What is the world's energies like right now? Anything we need to be watching out for. Um, so, it, you know, I kind of feel it's an important piece, but, you know, that's for you to decide. Now, I have prayed, meditated, and infused all the decks with Reiki energy, but remember, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate. Take what you like. Leave the rest. I am an intuitive channeler. I open myself to God, um, Holy Spirit, Source, and just say, what do you need? What do you need to say? What is needed to be said? Um, so... Like I said, general reading, take what you like, leave the rest. May or may not resonate. couple of things. We do have the Chinese New Year or, you know, the starting on January 22nd. It is the year of the rabbit or in some of the Asian cultures, the year of the cat. Very similar or if not the same characteristics. Now, what I was reading and I posted it that it actually starts that piece of the year actually will start, I think it was February 4th, but I put that into my, um, you know, under our Just Community page. So that was a couple of days ago. So you might want to take a look at that. So we do have the new moon on the 21st, th this happening on the 22nd. It's still not changed over what the year is all about, but it's still new opportunities, new new um, possibilities also. Now on the 22nd, 23rd, we also have Uranus going from retrograde to direct. So right now it's in a very slow-mo um, motion. Retrogrades aren't, the planets don't actually go backwards, but, and I loved, I loved this from one of our subscribers commented that the world just wobbles a little bit, so it gives us a new and fresh perspective. So it is going direct. Um, all the planets will then be direct. Um, like I said, Uranus is going a little bit slow motion right now. So the, the uh, expect the unexpected energies are intense. We had Mercury just go um, direct also. So there, you know, there, we call, there's a little bit of a shadow that goes, you know, goes beyond. Um, so we have a little bit of that shadow. And Mars, what was it uh, um, earlier, earlier, it went direct also. So we have all the planets going direct. The thing about it, when I talk about direct, is it's more a case that these planets will do what they do. However, the environment is changing around them. You know, I told you that Saturn will be visiting, will be going into Pisces. Um, Pisces is the last um, season of the astrological year. So in Pisces, we've been going through the age of Pisces for the last 2,000 years. That's about religion and business government. And, you know, I call it the business of religion, the rules and regulations. Pisces is a very deep um, introverted energy. So it does have a lot of dreams and fantasies, but there's another part of it that does have these rules and regulations. However, we have Saturn, which is the father of rules and regulations, um, going into Pisces. So I'm, I'm looking at some big major cleanup major cleanup energies for the next what whatever it goes, two years, 23 months, 24 months, um, and that will start in March. And then, of course, I'm, yeah, and then, of course, I've been talking about how Pluto, which has been in Capricorn, and it's all, you know, since 2008, for three months, again in March, um, 
will be going into Aquarius. Aquarius has thoughts, has, you know, his friendships, is about the people, is about new ideas. So, you know, this is, you know, when, when Pluto was in Capricorn, there was a moment about a, was it a year ago, year, year ago, um, was it two years, year ago, two years, whatever, that um, Pluto and Capricorn was in the direct position or the same position it was in 1776, which was part of that revolutionary war energy. So as we go into Pluto going into Aquarius, there's the rebuild, there's the new ideas, there's the possibilities, but it only goes there for three months. But like I'm saying, all these planets are going direct. Uranus does the back and forth, you know, um, you know, goes direct once a year, goes, um, you know, re um, retro, you know, it, it does this at least once a year. Um, Mercury does it three to four times, you know, Mars every, what is it, every 26 months. The thing is about it is when these change, or when our perspectives of these planets change, things look different. But remember, they can be doing the same thing, but their environment changes, okay? So they're doing it in a new environment. So even if they've been doing it, Mercury, like I said, three to four times a year, now their environment is changing. So it, it is all new, fresher energy too. So I told you 22nd, 23rd, I'm looking at my little cheat sheet here. Uranus goes direct. Um, the 25th, we have Aquarius sextiling with Jupiter, which is in Aries. That is a positive energy. Uh, so that'd be the 24th, 25th. And then on the 26th, 27th, Venus enters Pisces. So we got, you know, uh, Venus is about emotional relationships. Again, we have that, um, that dreamy energy around us of Pisces. But then remember, Pisces, Pisces can be strict too. Pisces can be, this is the way it needs to be done. But Pisces is also the great manifester. So it could be a time to manifest when Venus goes into Pisces. It could be a time to manifest that relationship you're looking for. All right, so here we go. Two cards popped out of the desk. This is, and I'm not sure, I'm kind of feeling like maybe it's these two, but we'll, I mean this way, but we'll see. We will see what we will see here. Let's see what else we might have with the Weight Rider te um, deck here. And do this. Oops. Um, anytime that there is a shift in moon, remember new moon is about all the possibilities. It's new seasons. Um, during Aquarius season, we will have the Leo full moon. I believe, too, that this new moon is a super moon, so it's a very close. Um, it's a cl The moon is closer in the orbit to the Earth than, you know, before. Anyway, so let's see what we've got here for our third card. What's going on, higher power? What's going on in the world? Okay, first card is balance balance so now we have basically in the tarot and you know i tell people if you watch me long enough um i i explain the cards and you'd be able to read your own cards um you know maybe not with the intuition but the intuition will come but you know if you watch me because i give the explanation so the this is pentacle energy pentacle energy is earth energy money energy it is associated with capricorn taurus and virgo energy now we still have mercury is still in capricorn uranus is going direct in taurus now virgo's just kind of chilling out a little bit right over there and and i think virgo energy if you have any virgo in your natal chart you know i think that that's kind of like well we get to business but keep your eyes off of me Anyway, we've got a two. Two is crossroads, choices, decisions. It's coming together. You can see that he is, you know, I'm not quite sure if he's necessarily juggling or if he's just trying to keep things in motion. But there is this money energy, um, money, job, career could be home. There is this money energy that's just being kind of, I'm kind of getting this, um, you know, pay Peter to, or rob Peter to pay Paul um, you know, just have to kind of keep things in balance, not necessarily um, as, you know, as exciting as I want it to be, but, but, you know, it, you know, there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of stress, there's a little bit of tension with this, with this energy. However, if you think of this as a rubber band, nothing is being really pulled on this. 
it's just kind of it's just kind of um, waving around. It's a little bit unbalanced. He's standing on one foot. The waves are there, but it's not overwhelming. That's not overwhelming. So if you're feeling overwhelming stress, um, at the you know if you're feeling that there's a lot of stress with the money situation, which I'm not going to say there isn't, do not let it overwhelm you. Um, keep your eye, you know, here. Now I think that about a week ago, when one of my introductions, I said, watch the money. This is a balance energy. This is trying to balance the energies, balance the money. In some ways, he's doing a little bit of a juggling act again, you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul. But at the same time, it's not, um, you know, I just feel like he's not out of control at this moment. So even though it may feel out of control, there, it, it's really not out of control. Um, it just, it's just the anxiety that appears or that um, comes through with this. Okay, so let's go on. Next card. So here we have the wand energy. Like I said, there's four energies. There is earth. There is fire. Now, fire is our Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. It's passionate, burning, determined. Remember, we have Jupiter in Aries right now. And Jupiter wants to provide. Jupiter wants good things. And Aries is about action and action steps. Let's get this moving. Uh, Leo, like I said, we do have, I think it's the 4th or 5th of February, we have that full moon. So Leo energy will be starting to get stronger, passionate, burning, determined, very, very committed. So the court cards have two, have dual energies. This one, um, the page has the earth as the underlying energy. The knight has um, the fire as the underlying energy. Wands is fire. Wand, you know, so this is uh, fire, fire energy. This is moving forward energy. This is not, you know, this is like, okay, I've got my plan. Don't stop me. This is, this is not being contained. Okay, it's not like the air energy when you see the air, the Knight of Swords. The Knight of Swords is kind of like, I don't give a darn anymore. I'm just going to go do it. The Knight of Wands, the fire, fire energy does have a bit of a plan, is going into action, is making, you know, it's a very calculated risk and is not really taking a no for an answer. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. Now we have the Page of Wands. So we have the money. And we have the fire. We have the earth, and we have the um, the you know the compulsion. The I have to do this. I have to do this. So here, the page of wands is a combination of both. Underlying is that earth. Um, overlying is that fire. Um, so the page generally is a messenger. So you might be here. You know, the world. There might be some news about money and struggles, and yet do not be a worried or afraid type of thing. But the pay, you know, so there is that underlying of the earth, money, job, career type of stuff. But you've also got that commitment, that passion, that I really want to make some changes. So there's something happening between the money and the and the fire. Something between the stability and the, um, you know, the commitment. So the page wants to get started, wants to make some changes, wants to go forward. Generally, the page is usually about a, um, or is has a, a connection with a new job, a new career, a new way of making money, a new path in that earth energy. And then the wands is passionate. The wands just says, yes, this is what I want going on. So there's a little bit of this balancing, this, you know, this, this, this juggling of this money energy. Um, you know, it, it does have some choices with us too. Do I, do I do this? Do I not do this? So we have this, you know, this uh, up and down type of feeling, but it really kind of puts the world in gear and kind of says, no, I'm not necessarily liking where I'm at. We need to make some changes. We need to be passionate. We need to, uh, we need it and we need it kind of now. Okay. Whatever that meant. Like I said, uh, I have learned to, or I, have, I still am learning to just deliver what comes through and not try to make too much sense of it. So let's see what we've got with the Colette Baron a read. What we have here. Please, please, please remember to like, share, subscribe, click on the bell. You don't know how much that really helps. Um, you know, it just, 
Um, I'm not quite sure what's going on with YouTube, but they're just, it's just not necessarily uh, working out the way I would like this to work out. Okay, let's see what we have here. Here we go. Higher power, what else would you like to say? What's going on in the world? What is going on in the world? Now remember, anything reversed is usually strong energy. That's how I read the cards. Here we go. Okay, now we have the Queen of Water. So the Queen stands in her royalty. The Queen is, um, you know, is, is somebody who you do not take advantage of. The queen, of, uh, the queen is somebody who makes, the, makes a lot of rules. She does it with her heart, but she also does it with her thoughts and her mind. Now, water energy is Cancer, Pisces, and Scorpio. Remember I was saying that Venus will be going into, did I say it was Pisces? Yes. Oh, no. Was it Pisces? Let me go back and check that a second. Was it Pisces that Venus is going into? Um, on the, yes, Venus is entering into Pisces. So there's a lot of emotional energy with that. There's a lot of loving energy. There's a lot of, um, you know, clearing out of the, you know, clearing the rules in a relationship energy. So the queen's energy underlying is water. So here we have fire, fire, and here we have water, water. Uh, she is very intuitive, very loving, very caring energy. Um, she does have a little, she does get a little stressed out with what's going around because sometimes she doesn't necessarily feel as she's in control and she's a queen. She should feel in control. But the, this queen is always a little bit on that shakier side. Well, I'm saying for right now, this queen feels a little bit of the shakiness, feels a lot of that emotion, but also knows that with love, anything and all things are possible. So, We've got interesting energy. We have a lot of earth energy. Um, we have earth energy. We have a lot of fire energy. And now we have that water energy. The only energy that we did not talk about is our sword energy. And that is also our air energy. And that is our Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. Now Libra's kind of taken a little bit of a break too. Um, don't worry. They'll soon be in the game again. Uh, and also Venus does have a good association with Libra too. So anyway, air energy uh, is your thought processes, thinking things through, making plans, also hearing news. And we do have Saturn still in Aquarius and we still have um, Mars still in Gemini. So interesting times, interesting times. But remember, we are, we're changing it's all, you know, these things may happen very scheduled, but the other environment, the environmental, um, you know, the scenery changes. We're kind of, it's, it changes, but it's all in a different, it's, in, it, it's changing again. It's changing, changing, changing. And I do feel, you know, like I said, with Saturn going into Pisces, oh, I feel there's going to be a lot of cleanup um, there's going to be a lot of cleanup, especially in the business of religion and government. Okay, so again, please, please, please like, share, subscribe. Click on the bell for notifications. It really helps. I do appreciate you doing that. And right now, we will start your videos. Oh, if you're just watching the introduction, always know that you are loved. Stay shining and be blessed. Bye-bye. Hello, my Leos. Yep, it's always about the money with Uranus, isn't it? Uranus is now going direct, but like I said, the environment is changing around it. It's not like it's been for the last couple of years. Things change around it, so it has. It will make a different type of impact. Uh, let's see. Let's see what it is about, though. Let's see what in what is the impact, or what's going on for this week. Let's just do that. Oh, okay for our Leos. Well, we have the two of Gabriel. Higher power, what else do you want to say? What else would be good for our Leos? What else would be good for our Leos? So we have the two of Gabriel. Be bold, be strong, get out there, promote yourself, you know, do what you know is to be right. One and two. Let's see. Okay, so two, crossroads, choices. Could also be partnering and coming together. 
Gabriel is your energy. It's also Sagittarius, the adventurer, and it is Aries. Aries, Jupiter's in Aries, and Aries wants, you know, this wants action. Jupiter in Aries wants things to happen, and it wants to happen now. And it's kind of like, I'm feeling like, um, my Leo's that maybe the vines that or the the things that have been holding you back are being lifted. Um, you know, it's been very it's been very restrictive type of energy in some ways, and now it's like be out there, get out there. It may not necessarily make sense, but believe in yourself and do the things that really. Again, there's a lot of promoting out there for you. There's a lot of selling yourself. You know, you're, 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 you're what you do. Get your resume up to date. Do the things that you know. Put out all your good points. Be vocal. Be vocal about who you are. All right. So make bold and ambitious choices. Great progress is possible. Important relationships with people who share your vision. So there's a lot of marketing energy here. There's a lot of be bold. And again, that doesn't have to be just with a job, though that Uranus and Taurus has been messing with some of the careers. It can be anything, you know, it could be about your, um, your, your love life, your intimate, your family. You know, come on out a little bit more. Be a little more vocal. Your next card is that seven of Michael. Now, the seven of Michael popped up for Aries, I think. So if you have any Aries in your cross, you know, in the in your other sign, you know, your natal sign, you might want to look. But seven is about choices. There's another way. There's another path. Okay, I'm sorry. Seven is not about choices. Seven is about, it's a divine number, divine opportunity, divine um, intervention, divine interference. Michael is air energy. Can't... Um, Aquarius, it's also Gemini and Libra, thought processes, thinking things through. But the seven of Michael is about choices. It's about which way am I going to go? Thinking about it logically. Is there is there something more out there? Am I doing what I need to do? Again, it's this is about, you know, being more vocal about who you are. This is about promoting you. This is about saying, hey, you know what, um, you know, it, it could even be, look at all the work I do. Look at what I do. There's more. There, you know, hey, I need a little bit of acknowledgement. So there's some acknowledgement energy with the Seven of Michael, too. So there is a better course of action available to you. Working alone may not be the best answer. Review all the details. So this, is a, this has a major shift. I mean, this has you kind of getting up and being more vocal about who you are and what you are, what you bring to the table. And again, usually it has to do with your work and your job um, just because of Uranus and Taurus, but it could be even in any of your re any of your relationships. Your next card, reversed, the Eight of Ariel. So we have an Eight, Unlimited Opportunities and Possibilities. Ariel is our Earth Energy. Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. Remember, Mercury is still in Capricorn. Um, Pluto is still in Capricorn. I've, you know, I'm, I'm so working with the changes, but it still is in Capricorn. Tor, uh, Uranus is in, you know, Taurus too. So we have this Earth, money, job, career. It's basically, again, I just get this stand up, you know, promote yourself, tell people, you know, who you are, what you bring. You know, they need to acknowledge, they need to, you know, it's like, hey, you know, I, you're of value. You're of value, my Leos. You are. You bring value to whatever it is that you are, you know, in that relationship, whatever that relationship is. Um, you may, you know, always with the Eight of Ariel, the Eight of Pentacles, you do still need to learn more. You still need to keep um, updating your information. But again, that could be updating that resume, updating, you know, maybe make some switches, make some changes to what you present. Um, again, it's the marketing. It's a marketing. And again, there could, you know, you might need to change how you're doing and how you're presenting yourself. Anyway, take pride in your excellent work. Practice makes perfect. Consider getting additional education or training. So there's a boldness with this. You have, you have to, you have to make some, not necessarily make changes, but it's a, it's like, you might be my Leo's like, well, they should see it. They should know. No, no, no. You've got to be a little bolder. You've got to market. You've got to market. Now, if you're in an intimate relationship, maybe you need to tell that person um, all the good stuff that you do. You know, kind of, you know, maybe they've gotten used to you making coffee or bringing coffee. 
and um, you know, I'm not saying that you don't um, bring it, but if you don't, they will know that you can like, like, well, where's my coffee? Well, you know, it so it could be something very intimate um, relationship. It could be again, it could be like, well, you know, I do do these things. These are not necessarily expected. So you go beyond and above. You go above and beyond, and maybe they need to they need to know it. Who are who are they? You tell me. Okay, guardian angels. What is it? What is it that we, how do we pull this together? How do we put this together? My Leos, you can, you can roar. You can go out and say, this is who I am. Here we are. Reversed. It's a win-win situation. This is the temperance card. So we have a 2, 7, 8, 8, 7, 2, and now we come to this 1, 4. One, new beginning. A 10 is a transitional. Four is stability, organization, and leadership. You add it together, it becomes a five, and that's all about change. This is the temperance card. This is a win-win solution. There's strength and diversity. So it's like you got to try something a little different. You have to be bold and try something a little different. All right. Um, by blending the ideas of others with your own, you can often come up with a solution that's magnificent. Start by focusing on the aspects that everyone agrees upon and then open your mind to compromise and working together. Stay balanced and seek out a moderate approach. So while you're doing something a little different, it's kind of like saying at the same time that people don't want it too different. You have to be a little different. You have to be a little bolder, but don't be too different because they, they're not ready for that. They're not ready for that. Okay, so let's see. Angels and fairies, what do we have for our Leos? What do you want to say to our Leos? But this is this is a change energy here. This is change. It's time for a change. Okay, what do we have for our Leos? What else do you want to say to our Leos? Let's see. Okay. Yeah, it's like Yeah, you you, you need to be you need to be a little bold, but don't be too bold. How's that? Here we go. My little rosebud. Okay. Do not allow other people's thinking to influence your own decisions. Realize that you have the power to do many things. So here we have this temperance, but yet at the same time, it, you know, it goes back to this boldness. So yes, it again, find out what, what everybody kind of agrees upon. But then, like I said, it's, it, this is a marketing energy. This is a energy that you've got to be a little bolder and you've got to tell people what you bring to the table. Okay? And then work on that. <laughs> okay, let's see. What crystal or energy for my Leos as, you know, with this? What, what crystal or energy do we have? This one is reversed. Angel light. Angel communication. Clairvoyance. Alignment. Dream insights. Angel light's a beautiful um, energy, especially to connect with your angels, to connect with God, Source, um, and whoever that else, whoever else that might be. So, let's see. My Leos, step up to that plate and batter up. I don't know. You tell me. Okay, please do me the favor. I'll be bold and say, please do the like, share, subscribe, and click on the bell for notifications, especially if you want me to keep doing what I'm doing. I really need the support on that. So, most importantly though, my Leos, as always, my Leos, know that you are loved, stay shining, and be blessed. Bye-bye.